So because we've lived in this technological world for some time, we, we kind of we begin to see ourselves apart from it, as, as if there is a process somewhere that is automatically producing all of this technology and that it's automated in some way. And that's just false. I mean, what's really the case is that in every aspect of this technology, there is a human brain busy programming or constraining, and it's a big question. What are these brains doing? You know, how do they generate this creativity and this kind of um, uh, feasibleness of stuff, right? In neuroscience, one was concerned to describe the biology with uh, less concern about what it means as a computational machine. And uh, neuroinformatics, by contrast, is concerned about the technology aspect of, uh, of brains. How is it that it achieves what it does? When we talk about the retina, we look at what is it that the human or mammalian retina does, and then can we, can we re reproduce this behavior with the microelectronics? Mm -hmm. The different chips that have been made throughout the years are just reproducing um, the behavior of the retina, the function of the retina. So transform light into electrochemical signals. And so the idea is how do these elements do computation? For example, how do we recognize faces or recognize patterns with these, um, with these devices? In order to resolve those kinds of questions, one has to begin with the biology. And so um, there are many places that you could begin, but our taste is to begin with the uh, cerebral cortex. So we have um, worked on this problem, trying to understand what, is the neuronal, what are the neuronal connections in cortex, how do they come to be formed the way that they are, and what does that mean for computation, and can we build technology that looks more or less like that. In the future, it will be very difficult to have all millions of transistors or hundreds of millions of transistors on the chip working reliably because they're becoming so small that they are becoming unreliable. Yeah. And so the idea is to try to find a way to go around this problem and getting inspiration from the brain because the brain does that. It's using unreliable components to do computation. Brains are fundamentally different to conventional computers is, is that they're self-constructing. It's clear that the construction process itself brings um, configuration, brings uh, programs, brings uh, specific wiring that does things that uh, prepare you for a kind of existence, for an, an effective existence. And so it's, of course, it's common cause that you know, birds get born and they watch their parents fly around a bit and then they jump on the side of the nest and they fly. And so how did nature discover how to construct this program? How can it be reliably implemented in a number of different contexts, whether you're a fish or a bird or a human? The input coming from the sensors, from the retina, into the cortex is only 10% of all the input coming into the neurons. 90% is just local recurrent. So, so 90 the question is to created by the brain itself. is our imagination. Yes, is what we so we see what we want to see, or we we perceive what we want to perceive. Only 10% of the data actually comes from the real world. Conventional computers um, depend very much on on very close synchronization of all of the operations mm -hmm. that they perform. That kind of very strict synchronization and sequencing just doesn't happen in brain. Conventional computers use this, this clocking, this synchronization to go much faster than what's happening in the real moment. Biology doesn't do that, it just does what it can do in the moment. The retina wants to take the interesting information out of the scene and encode that in a way which is not immediately recognizable as an image into something else. And it wants to do that immediately at every moment in time. When you look at it, you should look at it as 
the, the elements of a new kind of hardware technology that is brain-like in style and tries to answer some questions also in the standard computer engineering domain. Uh, the idea is to create something that you can give to computer scientists that usually use webcams, but instead of having a webcam, you have something that is a model of the retina. So the goal of the retina in this sensor is not to reproduce an image like a photograph, but to actually extract relevant information for doing, for doing some behavior, for navigating or uh, recognizing patterns. For example, one thing which is really useful for is obstacle avoidance or line tracking or it just if you want to detect a feature really quickly without having to go through to have a computer that does all of the processing then this is ideal. So that's why I, I think it could be really useful for robotics because you get this immediate information at the time it happens you don't need a computer to process it. It's very likely that this sensor will have a major impact, if not revolutionize, the way we do vision processing by computer at the moment. Humans have a sense of wanting to do something, whether it's climbing Everest or sailing around the world, or they have a sense of this of fulfillment, of needing to push boundaries in some way. So we can all recognize that this is a phenomenon but for me, the question is, if I want to build a proper operating robot in the world, mm -hmm. I need to understand what this process is. And that brings with it the technical questions of what it is that this means. And so basically, that's, these are the kinds of questions that neuroinformatics is trying to resolve. Mm -hmm.